G'day, welcome back to the 40 channel. So today we're doing a couple little upgrades to the Troopy and this is getting it ready for the upcoming long drive for a drought. You saw us do that last year with Jack. Uh, this year, we've got a few more things coming up. So, dual fuel tank. We've already got the dual fuel tank set up in this. Okay, we're gonna lift the uh, auxiliary <laughs> tank up. It was absolutely essential for outback and long distance traveling. It worked really, really well. And we did a big clean out, we used all that. We had a manual changeover valve. We're gonna upgrade that to a push button on the dash. Let's get into it. In the chassis. Right, you can see our old system here. So make sure you know what is your carby, your main tank, and your auxiliary tank. If you're putting a new system in from scratch, well, it'll be pretty obvious because you're running it straight from your auxiliary tank and cutting into your main line. If you've got old hose clamp lines and stuff like this, you're better off just cutting it off because the damage to the end of the hose line's not worth it. You might as well have a nice fresh piece of hose, fuel hose. Got all these uh, clamps on that we put on. They're all from Tooking. Everything we're using today is from Tooking. Now, we've got all our lines clear. It's as simple as hooking up our new uh, actuated valve. Righto, so here's our main direction of flow through here. When there's no power to the unit, if the unit fails or anything like that, we're just gonna come straight from the main tank, straight to the carby. When we add power to the unit, we're coming out from the auxiliary tank, down to the carby. So we'll hook all this up into the carby first. The only thing we're gonna do right now is gonna put fuel filters before the pump so we can capture anything going in here because we still know there's still crap in our fuel tank and we don't wanna damage our actuator valve. Righto, that's all mounted up. Now it might look like I've got these around the wrong way, but I've actually got that looping right around just to make sure I don't get any kinks in the fuel line, which is very important. So this one comes in to our, from our auxiliary tank. This one comes in from our main tank. So if you pull that out, you can actually see it is going the right way. Next thing we're gonna do is the wiring, run that up, and we will make a little protection cover over it, but we've gotta be careful that we make a metal protection cover that we don't hit this because this is positive. Right, so that's it. So the auxiliary solenoid valve for the dual fuel tank on the 40 series is all complete. Now all I have to do is push a button on the dash and we switch from the main tank to the auxiliary tank. Previously I had a manual valve so you could just switch between your main two tanks. It worked absolutely fantastic until recently it was sucking air in somewhere. So we tried another valve, which actually put it underneath the car, as you saw, which means you had to get out of the car, change it over, you couldn't do it while you're driving. Right now, so I know you're probably thinking or saying, but it has a return line, what do you do about that? Now, yes, you can get a valve system that has a return line, where it ends up having like about six different hoses going to it, and about three times the cost. So the quick, easy way to get around that is just using your thinking and your logic. We've hooked up a switch, so you can just flick the switch and you can see how much fuel is in either the main tank or the auxiliary tank, or using 
the original gauge. You can always put a second gauge on it. So the trick is to use your main tank first. Pretty much use it right down to it's nearly empty, flick it over to your auxiliary tank and keep using it. And what that does is as you're driving, the return line goes back into your main tank. So when your auxiliary tank's nearly empty, flick it back to your main tank and you'll find that your main tank is three quarters or nearly half full depending on how big your auxiliary tank is. It's that simple, just some common sense. Nothing crazy, no running extra lines and not paying a huge amount of extra money. You can save that money at the Bowser. Right, so hopefully this was helpful to anyone that wants to put in an auxiliary tank or already has one, just to make it a little bit easier. If you want to keep up with the whole 40 series builds, subscribe down here, hit a like, feel free to leave a comment and keep posted for a whole lot of extra stuff that's coming out for expansion of 40 channel and long drive for a drought where we're going to add to the map of Australia. Anyway, that's coming up in a couple months time. There'll be more on that very soon. Until next time, take care of yourselves.